What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerdy Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, Agatha Harkness. I saw the first two episodes with my wife this morning. I mean, not this morning, this afternoon. And it's pretty consistent with with what others have said about the show. So we'll give our thoughts on our first reactions to the Ag- Agatha Harkness. Uh, what's the name of the show now? Agatha All Along, in honor of the song from WandaVision, where she reveals oh, that she okay. was behind the machinations of that. I could have sworn I saw a different title. But... Well, it had five titles before they settled on this one. Okay. So it was called Agatha Harkness at one point. That was one of the iterations. And then we'll get into, Brian, this debate about whether or not Ghost Rider should be a movie, should be a TV series, which I think it makes a bit of sense, Brian. Um, so we'll get into that. But first up, Agatha, Brian. So with my wife, my wife liked it more than I did, Brian. I could, I just couldn't do it. For context, let me, can I ask you a question? Sure. How much, like, because you consume all of the content. How much of the, of the Marvel content do does your wife typically watch? I mean, she didn't watch Secret Invasion. She didn't. I think she watched Echo with me because it was, you know, it was a bingeable show. Yeah. So she's a uh, in and out. She's sometimes there, sometimes not. Because I, th- I do think that matters to how you receive this. Yes. She enjoyed it, Brian, because it falls within her, within within the genre of, uh, what's, that sh- what's that movie with Bette Midler? Hocus Pocus. Yes. Uh, I, do not like. and, I do not yeah, like that yeah, at yeah. all. I just, I, I just can't. I just can't. But she likes it. And so this, because it falls along the same, you know, look and feel, she, um, she enjoyed watching it. And she's looking forward to seeing the other episodes. But I think she's going to she's gonna rather wait till all of them come out so that she can just binge it and, and be done with it instead of waiting week to week. But Brian, I just couldn't. I just couldn't. I just couldn't get into it. Your thoughts? so far well i what i texted you was I, I said if this did not have a marvel logo anywhere i think it would have been a sort of in somewhat interesting kind of derivative type of show that i would have been curious about i think the fact that i know that it's marvel and i know based upon some of the easter eggs i think there's already some sense of what the purpose of the show is actually going to be it makes me like it a little less mm-hmm. um in the end, I would say through the first two episodes, I think the number one thing that I would probably say is harmless. That's what it feels like to me. It just, I think I already see the Easter egg of how they're trying to create stakes and consequence to this show. But otherwise, mm-hmm. you know, it just was like, this seemed like an excuse to get some talented women together in a room to hang out and do some stuff. And like, I, I just, as I said, I think I would have, I might have been more interested to click on it like in a Netflix queue and not have it be affiliated with anything. Um, yeah. As it is, I just, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the other show that came out this week. It just doesn't feel like it's going to have the weight. That doesn't mean it'll be bad. But I think I'm going to get to the end of this and kind of feel like exactly what I thought all along, which is I don't really know why this needed to happen. And Marvel is really trying to put something in this show to make me feel like it needed to happen. I think, Brian, they're trying to capture the audience that they failed to capture the first time around with She-Hulk. I think they're trying to gain that audience outside of the regular Marvel fans, right? Who may not watch it, but they'll have this other thing that they have a good following for. Well, it's interesting because, you know, This show straddles the line between drama, dramedy, musical. And I actually thought, you asked, you you were talking about Ghost Rider movie or TV. You know what I thought this, when I was watching these two episodes, I was like, you know where I would have been most interested in this? As a Broadway show. That's actually when I was watching some of the scenes play out. I was like, I kind of feel like this looks more like stage than screen. 
And perhaps yeah. it's not a coincidence that Patti Lapone, like who is a singing legend, is there, and Catherine Hahn, who's very good at singing in addition to acting. Like it feels like one of those like you would create a derivative product and throw it on in the Broadway. theater. Yes. As opposed to prestige TV, which I do not think this is. Did she remind you, especially in the f- first half, I guess, before she snaps out of it, of Miss Miscong- Congeniality? <laughs> That's not a bad analogy. That's you not remind, a bad analogy. It just reminded me like her, her, her mannerisms. And I think, I mean, obviously, yeah, well, I think she was trying to play a little bit of caricature of a detective, right? Because they were doing the, they were mirroring the WandaVision gimmick of the main character trapped in this sort of fantasy world. And then she's kind of trying to be, you know, she's almost trying to be like, can I channel my true detective Jodie Foster and have fun with that? But let everyone know this is not really that serious. Like you can kind of tell she's sort of overacting it a little bit deliberately. Like when you get the, when you get the witches in the coven and they're all standing in the room, you're like, okay, this group plus teen, that's our crew. Oh, I mean, my reaction is kind of like, it's fine. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, it's okay. Like, sure. But even, even compared to like the crew that like Loki assembled by the time we got to the end of that show, I was far more interested in that, the variance there. This one just kind of felt like, Okay, like, sure. Why not? Are you going to be watching this for week to week, Brian? Or yeah, you gonna... I will. I will. I mean, I, I will. I mean, partly because of the show, our show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But partly because, I mean, unless this is, unless I'm missing something here, isn't the real point of this show to bring back Wanda Maximoff? Seems like they're focusing a lot on that. There's a, I thought there were more, Doc Strange 2 connectivity here than I thought there was going to be. Like, there's a lot of, like, references to how Doctor Strange 2 ended, the most on-the-nose being the corpse, which, yeah, yeah, you could say maybe that's a bait-and-switch, but, like, there are some signs on the body, right, like, that would indicate maybe it is the body. And who cares if it is the body or not? Because in the end, we know that she has to come back at some point, so this seems like a way they're trying... This is my point. They're going to make this show about the end of the road being the resurrection of Elizabeth Olsen. And that in their mind is consequential to the MCU. And that's what we should care. about. Let's see, Brian, because when I was watching that second episode, I was dozing off. I was in and out of sleep and I just, and I wanted to watch it because Tracy said he watched it and he liked it. So, I, you know, I, I uh, trust his judgment. But um, but for me, it just wasn't uh, it just wasn't hitting on any. I am not at all excited about the Salem Seven. Yeah, they look so boring to me. It's like Lord of the Rings, the Ring Race, and they ran out of budget. (laughs) That's what it looks like. Yeah, this is going to be interesting to see um, how much better it will be. Will it? Will it give us something to sort of look forward to right now? They gave us the first two episodes, Brian, and I wasn't impressed. Um, but who am I, right? I'm a little, I'm, I'm mildly intrigued about the backstory of the hexes on the kid. Mildly. I did actually like that wrinkle of like every time he talks about himself. And I'm like, at least I wanted to see where that goes. Does it lead to someone of interest? Everybody's thinking Mephisto. Everybody's everybody keep talking about Mephisto. I feel like that is too obvious. I feel like, I feel like that's going to be the thing that Marvel now will just dangle forever and never yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. But yes, that was interesting. Ryan, that was interesting. Okay, you're like, you, you, there's this... There's some intrigue there, but um, but we'll see, Brian. Um, when does this come out? So these are out on Wednesdays, the typical okay. Disney um, Disney slot. 
it is nine episodes, which is the exact same amount that WandaVision was. Mm -hmm. Except the difference is, if I recall, WandaVision, the first couple when she's in the TV show are very short. Those first three or four are like 25 minutes each. These are 40, 45 minutes each. So it's a longer investment. Yeah. And it did feel long. To your point about I wasn't falling asleep, but it did feel draggy yeah. to get to the road. And so I'm yes, hoping yes. that like, okay, now you've, you've done your setup and now we're there. So hopefully we get some more you know, propulsion. Yeah, I mean, I, those first two episodes was definitely a, a setup for where they're uh, about the journey that they're about to take now. So that has me a little bit interested to see where this goes, but we'll see. We'll see. I don't think we would do a show on every episode of this. We'll probably no. check. We will check in, and I would say if something twist or a big reveal occurs, yes. then we'll talk. Yes, 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 yes. And now, Brian, uh, Ghost Rider, a character, Brian, that we've been talking about for some time. We've made some suggestions about how they should do this, Brian. Who said that they want a Ghost Rider series? The head of Marvel Television. Okay. What's his name? Brad Windebaum? Yes. All right. But he kind of throws a monkey wrench into it. In what way? Oh, he didn't ask for the Johnny Blaze character. He asked for the Danny Ketch Ghost Rider. He wanted a different iteration of it, uh, which I was less familiar with, but he's the second Ghost Rider from the comics. So the question is, why don't you want a Johnny Blaze? Why do you just want to be different just to, for the sake of? That, to me, that doesn't make sense. Give us Johnny Blaze. That's Johnny Blaze. That says it all. <laughs> you know, that's the name that everybody knows. Why you want to go with who again? Danny Dave Ketch. I understand you want to swing for the fences, but Ghost Rider alone is swinging for the fences because Ghost Rider to me is a difficult character to pull off, Brian. I was thinking in a movie, the only way it would work if it's a is a true horror film, Brian, because this guy's a skull, fire coming out of his eye. You know what I'm saying? This cannot be a regular do to do. You know this guy. You know what I'm saying? So with a series you'll have the effect like similar to like the incredible hulk where you only saw him for a few seconds and what if and and what you know he could do in those few moments that he did appear but for me the only way ghost rider really will work if they do that exposition and those instances where he does appear and it has to be horror your thoughts well, so you've raised this before. I think it's a really intriguing idea, and I would love to see it. Here's my question for you when I saw this piece. Do you, do you, when you think about it, do you think your, your idea of a horror product is more easy to execute in a two-hour movie versus, say, an eight-episode season of television? That would be TV, have to be TV. So it's a TVMA versus R. You make it a horror motif. Which do you think is a better medium for your idea? I think I would have to look for a comparison of a TV series that sort of... Uh... Well, like that American Horror Story, which they do every yes. year, is very popular and they kind of move it around. You know, they kind of add wrinkles to it. Famous people come in and do it for a season. People seem to really like that. Yes. But then horror movies tend to do well at the box office, as we've talked about. They tend to be lower budget. People like being in the same spot together to be frightened. Yes. Um, so for Ghost Rider, I, I think it's an interesting question. Tracy said a series will be too expensive. I don't know if, given the money that they've given to some of these shows, Ghost Rider would... I don't necessarily think it will be that expensive, Brian, because we're not talking about pure horror every second. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about regular stuff happening, and then you have those moments where you got to put that VFX, right? So it's not going to be something crazy. Um, well, I definitely think if the goal of the product is to have big set pieces, you need the big screen. 
I the think... goal of the product is to scare and use suspense and power of suggestion. I could argue that TV would be fine. I think with TV, Brian, you have the. I think it'll be difficult because if you if you think about the Ghost Rider movie that we, we were given, I don't remember anybody else other than John, than Nicholas Cage as Ghost Rider. Maybe Sam Elliott. Uh, Sam Elliott, but Sam, you know, he's the same dude. And I was gonna say what well, he's he he came out of the womb. He looked seventy five. Yeah. So. I mean, seriously, pull up, pull up the original Roadhouse and be like, that, and understand yes. that that movie was like 35 years ago. He looked the same. I think with a series, Brian, you have the you have the potential of giving us exposition and knowledge for future things. With the movie, Brian, you only have but so much, and will we care about the characters in that? Two hour movie. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's why I'm asking because I feel like it, 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 to do Ghost Rider, even acknowledging the Nicolas Cage movies that are out there, you probably are doing an origin story, especially if you're doing a different Ghost Rider, which means if you're doing it as a movie, the structure is kind of, you kind of know the structure, right? We have the intro of the character before they're cursed or before they kind of come into the power. You're not really going to get a ton of actual flaming skull until the third act, probably, of the movie. So, is that actually, you know, like if I contrast that to a TV show where over the course of eight episodes, it's almost like maybe this is not a great analogy, but it's like, remember like season one of Daredevil on Netflix where he doesn't really get the costume or anything like it until the very, very end of the show. Like he wears it one time in the very last fight. All the rest of the season, he's in the black, you know, black little towel around his head, basically. And the show works great. So I'm just sort of saying, like, you could do a build of this without it being a ton of Ghost Rider, Ghost Rider, if you set the mood right, which is why I'm asking about this horror motif, which is can you do it more effectively, actually, if it is on TV? I don't know. I mean, how many episodes were, were, was it when it first came out? It was like a miniseries, right? It was like four, it was two, four. That was only two parts. So that was two like parts. a four hour or I guess less commercials call it three hour. Yeah. Got it. Serious, you can try some scary, yeah, that's plenty scary. (laughs) So, but it was that exposition, Brian. It was those little things. And so, can they do that with Ghost Rider? That's that to me would be interesting because to redo a Ghost Rider similar to what Nicolas Cage did and just make it slightly better is not enough for me to be excited about. I do not think Ryan Gosling would do it in the TV show, though. Since he's the one who wants to be this character, yeah. although I would assume he wants to be Johnny Blaze, I'm, I'm guessing he t- maybe he just doesn't care. But like, he seems to be a fan of the character, which usually means he's a fan of an iteration of the character. Mm. I don't think he would sign up for the TV version. I think he's in it for the. So if you want Gosling, if that's a factor here, then I think they have to make it a movie. Yeah, but. Uh, m- m- my concern is will people care about any of it? Because a lot of people don't know about, I mean, it'll be, it'll be tough. It'll be tough. Well, yeah, I, don't know if I think so. If, I they, think if they the go horror. I was just going to say, I think your idea would make people care more. The series? No, in general. Uh, I'm saying if they dropped a teaser that basically let you know there was going to be intense fear and gory death and it's got the marvel label on it i do think people would sit up and pay attention oh yeah oh yeah if uh, on a teaser you'll get people to go see it how's it but let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the possibility of uh ghost rider coming to us either in a series or in a movie do you want to see Johnny Blaze or who again, Brian? Danny Ketch. Danny. I'm trying tough to. Name. That's a yeah. tough comic name. I'm just going to say. Yeah, because you owe you Danny Zuko. I know who Danny Zuko is, but Danny. Well, I was going to say, I was going to say, maybe think of Fletch. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Fletch is Ghost Rider. <laughs> oh, my God. But Johnny Blaze, you don't you don't forget that. And, and that's what people want to go see. That's people. That's what people who they want to go see is Johnny Blaze. Um, and also let us know in the comment section below 
what do you think about Agatha so far? Because for me, it's going to take a bit. It's just right now, it doesn't have me, you know, I can't wait for next week. Right now is let's see what happens. So, the, you know what I'm saying? So that's where I'm at. But let us know in the comment section below what you guys think. And we'll see you next time on the Nigeria Report. The show goes on.